Hello YouTube. It's Acid Rain from First Sun again with another massive tutorial and uh, a quick shout out to uh, all those who uh, tweeted the video the last tutorial I did. I, I saw that and uh, thank you for that. Um, this tutorial is going to be a little bit different than the last one if you haven't uh, seen the last tutorial that I uh, I did it was uh, doing a swelling base and massive so go check that out it's really neat um, and it's actually used in the same track that I'm working on still um, but today we're going to be doing um, a square ARP patch for massive and it sounds a little bit like this now that you've heard it um, when you add this pad in, uh, when you add this ARP in with some pads and other elements to uh, to a track, um, it sounds really, really good, and it's really supportive of all the other elements around it. So um, I'll turn the pad on and let you hear what it sounds like with the pad. <laughs> So you can definitely hear the, uh, the prominence of the, the square arpeggio um, patch in there. And so we're going to recreate that today. And uh, I printed out a couple sheets here because I don't remember the exact setting. So forgive me. Um, I've got to kind of go off of a guide here to recreate it from scratch again. Um, this will be provided down in the description for you to download um, if you want. And you can, you can do whatever you want with it you can delete it, you can edit it, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it um, as I did making it. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a new massive in here like this and for good measures we'll just turn make a new sound, file new sound and we're gonna turn on oscillator 2. Uh, oscillator 1 is always turned on so what our oscillators do is they shape the waveform that we're uh, getting um, and they actually create the sound. So if I turn off this oscillator, you can definitely, you can tell the difference between the, the two oscillators. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring, we're going to start this patch by bringing this down to a negative 7, point, uh, point zero 0.07 and then we're going to bring this one up to a positive zero 0.07 and that'll give us something like a saw wave kind of sound like that and then we're gonna drag these two up all the way and what this does is it routes it to filter one now with a lot of artists they might have two totally different sounds for their oscillators that they want routed into two separate filters with massive and this will give them a completely different sound uh, for this patch we're just gonna use one filter so we're drag this all the way up keep both of these up to filter one and then we're going to modify the positions of some of these knobs here and the first one we're going to do is we're going to bring the position all the way down we're going to leave the intensity and amp all the way up and for oscillator two we're going to bring this back to about here and our amp we're going to bring that back to about here and now that we've done that um, we're going to move on to our filter um, for our filter, we're going to use a low pass 2. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and play what I have so far. That's very square kind of sounding. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a low pass 2 in. And you can already tell the difference. Now, what the, uh, the passes do, low pass, high pass, um, all band passes it filters out certain frequencies um, so that only some frequencies are playing through um, the oscillator <clears throat> now um, right now it's a little bit too square like so we need to change this over from a square one square saw wave one and uh, we're going to change it over to grown four or five whatever that is there IV um, I don't know Roman numerals so um, we're going to change that over to that and we should get something like this. It's 
very calm, very warm and fuzzy sounding. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want it to sound like. It's, it's very quiet, but we'll fix that in a moment. And uh, we're going to start uh, the first thing by changing our voicing. We're going to bring the unisono up. So select your voicing tab, bring the unisono up to 8. And there's a reason that we're bringing it up to 8. When you're, when you're emitting a lot of sound through massive, um, there tends to be a problem when you're using um, multiple notes at the same time. Um, if you only have your unisono uh, set up to 8, then that's the maximum it'll use out of 16 total voices. You're, you're defining here saying, okay, you have eight voices to use, and that's it. Anything over eight voices gets cut out. Um, if you bring this down to one, well, then anything over one voice will get cut out, and we don't want that. We, we want the sound not to get cut out at all, so we'll bring it up to eight, and that should be sufficient for this patch. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on our pan position and bring it in between mono right here on the left side. And that'll give us a little bit more stereo sound to what we're doing. Um, now, now that we've done that, um, let's not forget to turn our resonance all the way down because we don't want a lot of uh, really high frequencies getting out. Even though we have the low pass two turn on, um, there is still when you turn the resonance up, there's still some high frequencies that can get out there, and we don't want those frequencies getting out. So uh, we turn the resonance all the way down, and then back down here, we're going to go into the envelope one. And um, this is where stuff starts getting kind of fun. This is where we start shaping the sound, to, um, the envelope to sound the way that we want it to um, for live modification and editing and um, throughout the rest of the track. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll bring the level down to about here and we'll bring the decay down to about here. We'll bring the level all the way up and you should have a, a fairly um, diagonal line here and then a small curve. <clears throat> if it looks about like that then you've done it right. Um, if not you can always pause the video, take a look at everything in full screen and um, set yours up just the same. Now now that we've uh, finished messing with our oscillators and we finished our filters and put in our low pass as well as changed our voicing and our envelope um, we're gonna go ahead and add some effects. Um, and the first effect that we're going to add is a reverb. So over here in the FX1 tab, we're going to change this to reverb. And we're going to bring the uh, dry down to about here. So it's going to be more dry. Uh, we're going to bring the size all the way down because we don't need a lot of reverberation in the, in the actual sound itself. We just need just a tad of, um, of distance. And we're going to bring the density back just a little bit as well. And now that we've done that, we're going to switch over to FX2, and we're going to add a delay synced, just like that. And the delay synced is going to be more dry, so right about halfway. Bring our dampening down to about here, and our feedback goes up just a little bit to right about there. Um, the left and right channels are going to be the same. Uh, we don't want to touch those, that's perfect. Uh, we're going to actually EQ this as well. And the EQ setting, so make sure you select EQ, turn it on, and then bring your low shelf back just a little bit, and bring your ba uh, your boost back just a little bit as well, a little bit more than the low shelf. And then your frequency goes all the way down, and then the high shelf goes up a little bit, about 1 o'clock. So, all right, so it's looking pretty good from here. So let's listen to what it sounds like right now. Cool. Sounds kind of like an organ right now, but um, it's going to get better. And what we're going to go for is more of like a clicking sound um, at the beginning of each note. And this gives it that tropical kind of sound to it um, that we want to have. So in order to do that we need to alter some of the the envelope and we are going to need to assign a MIDI uh, a MIDI control to some of these positions as well to modify so the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to drag envelope one into the first box here just like that and we're going to drag this up to about here not too much about right there and then we're going to also add one into the second box here on the cutoff on the filter one 
and we're going to drag that up to halfway, right at the halfway point, right there. And um, so now that we've done that, we're going to assign a number four, the uh, number four controller, to um, the second box and oscillator one, just like that. And then that's going to go all the way up to the middle, right there. And then also in the first box of the filter one. And now this one just gets a little nudge to about right there and we'll be good. All right, so now we're gonna also need to add in, um, <clears throat> we're gonna need to add in that controller as well with the level and the decay on the envelope. So on envelope one, we're gonna add it into level and we're also gonna add it into decay and then bring our level up just a little bit right there and bring our decay completely opposite in the direction that it's facing right now. So it should be right about there. Um, once you've done that, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's pretty much the entire pad. That's the, that's the entire arpeggio uh, square arp patch. And what it's going to sound like is this. And we can also bring this all the way up, like so. And you can use that to kind of uh, transform your sound as the track is progressing. However you want to do it, um, you don't have to use it if you, if you don't want to. But uh, I always add something in there and it, it uh, gives it a little bit more um, depth to the sound itself so that you don't need to go back and program a completely new sound to take uh, and um, uh, do a new transition to um, something else in the track. So um, that's pretty much it. As I said, that's that's the uh, square arp sound. Um, you get that little clicking sound at the beginning of each note, which uh, gives it a lot of depth um, and gives it a lot of uh, uh, originality. It has uh, like its own little thing going on, which is really neat. And so um, I'll provide, like I said, I'll provide this patch in the description, um, which is linked directly to my website. You can download it, edit it, do whatever you want to do with it, um, have fun with it. Um, and whatnot. So uh, I'll just go somewhere here in my track and just kind of play a, um, a little piece of some uh, some a new track that I've been working on called Proto. It'll be on my upcoming album, and this is with the Square Arp patch and the bass patch together, um, and you can kind of get a sound of how everything is together. <laughs> So that's pretty much it. That's it guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial with Massive and uh, I hope it helps make your sounds a lot more beefier and better than they than they were before. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe, uh, give it a comment, um, let me know what you think about the patch, let me know what you want to hear next for the next tutorial. Um, I always love to hear from you guys. I'm, I'm open to answer any questions or, or um, you know, make a new patch uh, that you guys might be interested in hearing. Um, so leave that down in the comment section. Um, subscribe it, like it, whatever you guys do. Um, and don't forget that if you want to support First Sun and First Sun Music, you can always head to my website. It'll be in the description. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm a lunatic. I'm crazy on Twitter. So um, follow me there. And... Um, there, you can always receive new updates of some of my tracks and, and some neat things, uh, as well as uh, um, get top uh, latest information from First Son and uh, <clears throat> the new album. So thanks a lot, and until next time, um, keep taking your music to higher and better places. Mm -hmm.